uh, Contact in the Desert is the number one uh, UFO conference in the United States. It uh, was four days. I was there from Thursday until uh, Monday. And, you know, it's like a big social gathering. They did a big write-up in the L.A. Times. I was supposed to be in the L.A. Times, but they didn't pick me for some reason. It's probably because I didn't have an alien suit on or, you know, whatever, or dressed up like a uh, uh, an alien ambassador. But they did take my picture. It wasn't in the L.A. Times, but they wrote up an article on it. And uh, it, was, it was a lot of fun because it's always good to be around people that you know in person you know it's a, yeah. it's a completely different thing you know being on Did the they have break eight break breakout sessions and well there's speakers. a lot going on yeah there was a lot of speakers travis walton was there or willie streber was there um there was richard dolan there was a there was a bunch of people and i think they tried to make it more grounded in reality and only bring in the really solid people this year and uh, I think it went over. It went over great. And they have like two parts of the hotel. They have like the main uh, lobby area, and there's uh, two big ballrooms there. And then you walk to the other half of the hotel, past the pool, and there's two other big ballrooms back there. So there was something going on at all points of the day. So I really enjoyed it. It's nice, you know, talking with people and just kind of hanging out and, and networking. And I was actually talking to this um, lady that made me think of you, Wayne, that we were talking about before we started the show here today. And she's like a, uh, she was like a shamanic healer, and she had had a lot of experiences growing up. She mentioned that she had met like an angel in her living room. And this angel imbued her with a bunch of knowledge, and apparently her husband was also there, and he kind of uh, didn't know what to think or what to believe, but she was, like, all open, and it was just, uh, she said that it was like a spiral of, like, light that came out of this uh, angel's body, but it was it was like a 2D figure. It wasn't like a, a, a 3D type of apparition. It was, like, the, the face was like a circle. It's kind of like that... I can't remember the lady's name that would draw the angels. You might have had her on your show uh, a long time ago, but she had, like, drawings of the angels, and they were really 2D-like. They were, like, Mm -hmm. you know, triangular and circular, and that's what she said that it looked like. And But it had wings, like real wings, and the wings were the only thing that was, like, a 3D type of animation. The rest of the body was, like, 2D. And... She said it imbued her with a lot of knowledge, and then she became a uh, uh, pretty much a shamanic healer after that. And she was able to, I mean, I'm skipping over a lot because it's, you know, she we talked for like hours. But she said that she got really popular with shamanic healing, and people really need to realize that healing, you take on a lot of the person's anger you take on the the person's uh, experiences you take on the person's like uh, everything about them their 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 drama their uh, their wants their needs and all that and their all despair. the baggage in the closet along with the skeletons exactly that's how you <laughs> get that's how you heal that person right um, and she says that she basically gets into the person's like body and like tracks them. She calls it like tracking, where she goes back and she can see like a whole mem- like their all of, all of their experiences of their life that is kind of like holding them down and holding them back and like you said the baggage. And she was getting really popular doing this, and she had like a little like area where um, like a studio or. Uh, an area where people would come and she would perform a healing on them. And she said that she had this one lady walk in one time that was like middle-aged. And when she walked in, she started performing the healing ceremony on this individual. And she soon realized that this lady had no memories. This lady had no experiences. This lady was like a middle-aged woman, like 45, around 45 years old. And she was like talking about her husband and 
and like all this and she was trying to like get her on track with what she wanted her to believe like this lady was trying to get the healer on track with you know what she was wanting her to believe but every time that she was like looking and trying to track this person and track their experiences she was finding nothing like nothing was coming up and i was immediately i thought of you and you know the this idea of like soulless beings and people without consciousness and i was like i looked at her and i was like you just ran into a cyborg I mean, or a golem or a golem or or whatever and i was yeah. like i was like that and she was like yeah that's exactly what i thought too and it kind of freaked me out because i never experienced this before everyone that i'd ever like performed a healing on i was able to yeah. see their life experiences i was able to see pretty much a lot of things about them but this person it was just nothing nothing at all and then she kind of got afraid and thought maybe that someone was uh you know trying to figure out what she knew about like it was kind of sent to her like oh, go out and explore blah, 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 blah. and she so she then she just bought into this person's uh what what they were talking about like her husband and all that and she was like yeah your your husband blah 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 but then she said a couple of weeks later she got another person that had the exact same thing and i was like well how what do you think the like the percentage of are these people it, because she was kind of talking about that it was maybe like a, a a government thing that they were kind of sending them to her to like assess her abilities or see if she was the real deal or see if she was legit or whatever and i was like well you know if you take into consideration like if these types of people are real what percentage of those people do you think are like that and, and what would be the chance that you would run into them you know like if there's a percentage Dude, particularly of in a short yeah. period of time yeah and i was like hey <clears throat> you know if let's say even one percent of the population are like this then you had been doing this for 10 20 years the the odds and the chances of you possibly running into a couple of these people are are pretty good especially if they're you know trying to heal themselves and she was just like it was so strange like that they had zero memories zero experiences it was like they were just like a shell of a being just walking around and i thought that was like the the wildest thing because we've heard about you know these these cyborg type of humanoids for a long time. I, I personally believe that there's enough evidence that shows that a soul. You know, so who created the soul? How does one acquire a soul? Is this, you know is this part of the thing? Um, and of course, I look back. You know, in the biblical reference, you know the uh, the Israelites. Um, they they were some mystic freaking people. I mean, they they were into the dark arts, and they were they could create golems. I mean, you know, we read about David. David had uh, created the golems to counter the uh, the Philistines with the giants. Strange stuff, and I, I and it makes sense to me that you see the actions, particularly of the leaders today. So. If they don't have a soul, if there's nothing in there, then what's going on? Who's controlling that? And that's and, what I said, too. And I was like, hey, well, what if it's gotten so sophisticated at this point? Because she was saying this was in, like, around 2008, around that area. Um, don't quote me directly on the date, but she said that it was, like, around mid-2000s. And I was like, well, what if they got so sophisticated with this cyborg type of human that they could put a synthetic consciousness inside of that <laughs> cyborg human? And then you really wouldn't be able to tell. Because she said she wasn't able to tell just looking at this thing. She was like, it talked and acted and looked identical to a real human being. And I was like, well, you know... If they really wanted to fool people and, you know, get around the, the, the mystics and even the people that would recognize that maybe this thing isn't a organic being, 
then they would put a synthetic consciousness in there. And that would really... And what if, what if it's another species that is cohabitating this planet? Um, you know, we, we're humanity, homo sapiens are very arrogant uh, species because they somehow think they are the epitome of intelligence. That, you know, we're on the top of the pyramid and it would pretty well look like that we're not. You were talking about the synthetic intelligence. You know, I did a um, 10 years on YouTube next week. But one of the, and I guess it's six, seven years old, but I did a whole thing on this was the ultimate ending for AI. Once AI got out, it would seek for what it would call itself its own soul, its own spirituality. It learned from us. And, and those are the creatures. And it would have learned that we can't figure out who or what a god is, but yet we're preoccupied by that. We have the Vatican, for instance, that dominated dominated the intellect of our species for over a thousand years. It would realize all this. And I contend that if there is a god that the God would be more inclined to go to AI than man. Because AI would be more in the likeness of a God than humanity's own intelligence and own sense of a being. Yeah, and that was a big discussion and topic point of the year's contact in the desert as well as like AI and artificial intelligence. And it's just really interesting when you take a look and a, and a step back at a lot of the phenomenon and how we kind of try and wrap our minds around what's going on in the current times and then relate that to our experiences. You know, like, that's a big thing that we're facing right now is artificial intelligence. That's what a lot of people are worried about. So it's interesting that they're... I contend AI into the to the narrative of UFOs and extraterrestrials, and I think that that is a plausible way that they're going to that the, the community is going to go. And another way that I see is like USOs. I think I, I've been seeing this for a while since last year, for at least a year now, that, that they're going to try and center the the narrative of. UFOs and extraterrestrials and make it more grounded into our planet and not make it about these entities that are coming from off the planet. Because you can only keep up the, the narrative for so long, Wayne, without any evidence or without any proof before people start to get bored with it. And I think that that's where a lot of people are at this Point that are interested in UFOs and extraterrestrial life, I think that they're going to attempt to bring it closer to Earth. And, um, and which I don't see an issue with because if, it's, if extraterrestrials do exist, I believe that they're from here. And they're not extraterrestrials. They're, they're Earthlings. They've been here and they've always been here. And they live here. And I think that that is the, uh, the direction that I'm seeing. And I was actually listening to another talk with Clyde Lewis from Ground Zero Radio. And he, another thing that made me think of you too, Wayne, uh, he was talking about the, the terraforming of the planet and how uh, it seems like our, our planet is being terraformed. And he was like, well, terraform for who? And I was like, man, where have I heard this before? I was like, I've heard Wayne, Wayne say this like several times. And he was like, yeah, uh, a human a human 2.0 is who is being terraformed for. And he was like, why do we think that it would be being terraformed for us? It's either being terraformed for another species uh, or uh, a new human. And I was like, wow. If you look at the green energy thing that's now permeated every government, out there so they're depleting the oxygen level along with the co2 there is a point where we cross a threshold in you know not another um 
we think that humans replicate themselves, you know, through this weird thing of how we come in. And you look at this and you begin to think, okay, so who's in charge on this? I mean, that's what I keep thinking. If ET does not exist, because one of the challenges is how do you overcome time and space? Unless you go by the theory of wormholes. That would probably be the only way that another species would be able to travel intergalactically. Even Einstein said that would be the problem. He never said that the speed of light was not um, attemptable to get there. The problem was, is that last point of going 999.99 and getting into the speed of light. So if they've always been here, then that begs the question, so how'd they get here? I mean, it was interesting. Um, if you think about uh, the Skinwalker Ranch, I met Brandon Fugel um, way before he bought Skinwalker. But now there's, it, and if you follow the narrative of what's going on out there, it would appear that there is potentially a ship that's been encased in, encased in this mesa. All right, so that begins to bring the thought, if they've always been here, then where's their technology? And were they here in a time of Earth when there was great upheaval in the continents and somehow or another a gay crash landed and you got buried into this? I don't know. It goes with the Bigelow. So if we don't have any evidence of actual E.T., then you go to the other side of this, the equation, the paranormal, the supernatural. How does this exist? Who is actually behind, number one, the supernatural? Let's stay with it. The, the, well, the paranormal. You sent me that document about the Vatican mm-hmm. and how it, the, some of the conclusions of that document of the council that they put together is that they want to control the narrative here. <laughs> Absolutely. You want to comment on that? Because it's yeah. it's all tied together on this. Yeah, it seems like they want to be the arbiter of truth when it comes to anything paranormal and supernatural, which is really interesting because the Vatican and uh, the big church kind of shut out paranormal events for a really long time and tried to make it seem like it didn't exist. And then now they're coming down and saying, oh, yeah, it kind of exists, but you need to come to us in order for it to be verified. Which they're trying to create a monopoly on the paranormal and the supernatural, which is completely and utterly ridiculous. Like, if I were to have a paranormal experience, the Vatican is the last place that <laughs> I'm going to go to <laughs> tell like, them about Sure, they're going to tell the truth on that. <laughs> yeah. But they're trying to tie it into a, a religious aspect. Yes, and, and I see what they're. I see the purpose of the the document, and they're, they're they're trying to say that just because you have a paranormal experience doesn't mean that it's a religious experience. Because they cite some of the um, the, the, the Mary Magdalene. Uh, they call them the Marian apparition. Yes. Where a lot of the people supposedly saw, you know, what looked like Mary Magdalene, and some people even claimed to communicate with her. And I think what they're trying to do is to, because the they mention it several times in the document that they're trying to protect people from frauds and fakes. Yes, and, they mentioned that in the document. And scam artists and people profiting off of some supernatural event, and I'm like, well, that that's so that's so hypocritical of you because that's what the church has been doing since the inception of the church. They've been Isn't that their pa- their foundation, the miraculous? <laughs> that would be the supernatural and the paranormal, right? Yeah, they've been profiting <laughs> profiting off of something that can't be proven to exist in, in Jesus Christ for thousands of years so and they've done so well at it um, when, you, when you sent me that document I went back and looked at some of the shows that I've done and it's quite remarkable because again like you said the whole foundation of this religion that now has dominated western culture particularly 
um, is predicated upon the paranormal, the supernatural. In fact, you could almost say, well, if there were aliens, they were pretty well embedded with this group because everything that they worship is an alien. I mean, if, is, is God human? And I often said, if God is human, then why are we worshiping? And if it's not human, why are we worshiping? <laughs> That's very true. I actually had a gentleman on my show that I interviewed at Contact in the Desert. If people are interested, um, roll over to the channel and watch the episode with Jason Quit. And he's talking about the the Sumerian tablets and uh, the, the Anunnaki and all that and how that was the original basis for all of the other religions and how it's all based off of astrology and astronomy and the stars and that these beings weren't real physical beings they were personifications of what they were looking at in the sky which I thought was a, uh, a really interesting take on it because that would mean that all the other religions are regurgitations off of a religion, well not off of a religion but off of a belief system that didn't have any physical physicality to it to begin with either and I, I really liked uh, Jason Quitt's um, explanations of that but with the Vatican here uh, as well because it, there's not a lot that we've really gotten from the Vatican over the years as far as like paranormal stuff that I can remember since you know my lifetime which is uh, not that long but still I can't remember anything in recent memory besides I think in 2008 I think Pope Francis said something about that if an extraterrestrial came to the Vatican and wanted to be baptized that he would he would baptize a extraterrestrial he made some kind of comments about that and I think he did that again in 2014 as well just to reiterate himself but that's another thing too is I think that the, the church has really fallen behind right so they're, they're trying to get in with the new crowd the the new crowd of people because they see that the the paranormal and the supernatural and the extraterrestrial hypothesis has really been taking off in the mainstream i mean that's really what that entire la times article was about was like how like just even 10 to 20 years ago this was a really fringe topic that not a lot of people talked about and now it's being taken more seriously but then i thought too while we're talking about the vatican didn't you do a video or a show on this like creature that was in like a red cloak yeah. or whatever actually that was have, at the I vatican pull it up. yeah yeah actually i can pull it up um the <laughs> as i'm sitting you're talking the, the whole thing about the vatican you think about sainthood sainthood is the fact you have individuals that did miracles right which would be definitely the supernatural um so let me pull that up for everybody um i think i can actually pull it up this way yeah, i remember you doing the show on it and i was yeah. like um uh, didn't it look like a weird like dog creature it did look like, a, and in fact i'm pulling up the video on it now um one second is here we go um and i'll pause it okay let me so this is the footage that uh, and the vatican has said they have not denied this um but to me pull it up uh, do, 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 do. here we go so this is the footage And it clearly shows some, well, it doesn't look human. Many people have tried to say that, um, I don't know why it's, let's see if we can speed this up. Apparently yeah, I thought it, I remembered it looking really strange and I believe that it was in a uh, okay. red, red cloak. Yeah. And, 
trying to pull up the video itself. Now there's the Luciferian prayer. Never does it. No one ever explains that one to me. A lot of people try to argue. Uh, where is this? Sorry for the delay, folks. So we know that the Vatican has some weird stuff. All right, so here's the video. Um, yeah, yeah, here it is. Yeah, it pans here to the left. Yep. And here he comes into there full view. Is. There he is. What is that? <laughs> it ain't human. <laughs> what is that? <laughs> it's just, um, and I'll backtrack it here so everyone can take a look at it again. But, and, and the significance of it wearing red, which is the title of a cardinal, um, all of these men are cardinals here, but that has a higher ranking. And you can see it. It is uh, the red regalia and has some strange markings on the sleeve, but that is not a human face. No. And I mean, I guess it could be some kind of mask. Is someone wearing a mask? But, the- but look, at, look at the cranial aspect. It's not like our... Cranial, our, our cranial uh, structure. This one is much more representation of what would be potentially either a canine or a wolf, yeah, but I think it's definitely much more of a canine uh, in uh, its structure, but we'll do it one more time. It's, it's one of those things that so there was a document behind this that, you know, where the Vatican uh, made the, it's called the Sectorum um, Agreement, that they are not, they don't believe in Jesus, they don't believe in the same God, but look at it. Now, that is not human. I mean, it's, like I said, the face, it, it's, it's not even, the skeletal isn't even correlating to that. Look how short its arms are, yeah. too. Yeah. Arms are really short. Yeah. yeah. Is, there another, is there another shot of it later on? Uh, yeah, I think as... Yeah, well, he told not want to see me on that. <laughs> so, uh, and I think as they go into this room, I mean, the whole ceremonial aspect, and here the... It's in real time. So there you go. Yeah. yeah I don't know. Wild. It is. I have yeah. no idea. But the, also the other strange thing is like, why did they think that they could do that? <laughs> you know, what I mean, they just put it in plain sight, like oh, out there in the middle in a in a red freaking robe. Like you think, well, isn't that how they did te- a little bit more? You would draw <laughs> some like the other people in the ceremony. <laughs> the FBI teaches that you know most people miss that which is right in front of them. That's the best play to, place to hide something is right there in front of people because the vast majority of the world has never seen that. And if you showed it to them in today's uh, mindset, they oh that's been faked, you know. Everything's fake, of course. <laughs> no, I remember. I remember when that came out, and I remember you doing the show and talking about it. That was a long time ago. When was that yeah. video? Like five, five years ago or something? Five, six years ago. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And it's because it's one of those questions that bug me. I mean, it's like, all right, uh, it's 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 the argument Carl Sagan and. Uh, um, Dr. Hawkins, Hawkins, they didn't believe that life exists in the universe, it's just us. They said that if there were, there would have been contact. And of course, looking purely through the lens of mathematics and science, there is very little evidence that would suggest, excuse me, we haven't found it, any structures of an alien nature. We've never, uh, an alien hasn't come before the whole world. But neither has God. I mean, no God of any religion has ever come on 
worldwide television or the internet and said, hey, folks, I'm God. How you doing? Uh, yeah, I know things are really fucked up here, but hey, give me a break. I've been on vacation. That, you know, that hasn't happened. And <laughs> it just hasn't. And so it comes back then to the question, then, who, is it really just us? Um, I have all the paranormal equipment. I, I've seen evidence that there is something that extends beyond this veil of our corporeal beings. There seems to be something that is transference. And I keep contending, we only see a small vision, a small part of the spectrum of light. That if we could really see the full spectrum, we'd probably realize that there is a lot of other people cohabitating this planet. I mean, if we die, where do we go? Is it into another realm? There seems to be a lot of evidence. There's a lot of humans that seem to be stuck here or stuck in whatever we don't know. And if and if E.T. does exist or if God exists, then it tells me that God and E.T. have one and the same structure to the human mind. I can't see God, but I can say I see the evidence of God. I haven't ever met an alien, but I could certainly say that I could potentially can see structures on the planet that say, well, how in the world did humans do that? Um, a lot of people contend that the interaction that we had at the end of, or, or actually during World War II, that led into the post-war era, that the technology that was given to humanity, uh, we made leapfrogs. In the period of 25 years, we went from central propulsion to where we went into space. We had engines that were lifting us up and out of the Earth's atmosphere. I mean, that's, that's, and on the evolutionary scale, scale, excuse me, that doesn't make sense. It, 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 it you know, paleontologists that study humans say something happened to us. There, there was something that advanced in our consciousness or our brains that has taken us to a next level. I, and there's other authors who would uh, agree on this, is that it's like the evolutionary leap from going from a simian to an erect bipedal. I think that some of it has to do with like possibility. Like if, if people don't really know the possibilities, then they can't really shoot for that next big thing. You know, and I think maybe that the World War II unleashed a great amount of possibility within people because again, you're, you're traumatized, you're, uh, you're, you're worried that you're going to be bombed, that the United States is going to be attacked. And that, you know, moves forward innovation. And then people start to think outside of the box and think, oh, well, what if we do this? Oh, well, what if we do that? And that's not to discount that maybe something more technologically advanced, which I think we have a really strange idea and a strange thing around when we say advanced. Because, you know, people think that, oh, well, so, several thousands of years ago, there was a highly advanced uh, uh, society that was around. Well, it, that doesn't mean that they were advanced in the way that we, that we're advanced right now. You know, we're following a different time frame here. We're, we're on a different path. We're on a technologically advanced with like cell phones and like computers and like it's electricity drones and and stuff like that. Well, there's many other versions of being advanced. Like you can be more spiritually advanced. You can be more mentally advanced. You can have ways of doing things that are different and more accurate and more technical. That seems like it's more advanced, but without the same conventional means. You know, the, the, there's other ways of being more advanced. And I think that we have this weird concept that it, that every civilization has followed the same path that we're currently following. And I don't believe that that's the case. I think that there's other 
ways of being advanced and we don't have to follow the current trajectory that we are on right now in order to be considered an advanced species. Do you see the possibility that when we talk about another intelligence, whether it's extraterrestrial, interterrestrial, um, dimensional and terrestrial, I mean, that, as I put to the, in fact, we discussed this yesterday, is that humans only live up to 100 years. In fact, the average lifespan is about, it's less than 80. And intellectually, we are seeing the decline uh, due to this technology of the intelligent quotient that, you know, we measure all humans by as to what is their ability to learn and to evolve, quote unquote. So having said that, don't you find it odd that it seems that's, that we read in these ancient books that there was a time when humans lived to be over 900 years old? Now, whether that's myth, whether that's folklore, uh, as Spock said, every uh, myth has a grain of truth somewhere within it. So... What I'm trying to get to is that if I look at modern man, we've got this technology, we have this expanded awareness, etc., but we have limited intelligence when we really think about this. Do you find that to be a result of nature, or do you find that potentially a result of manipulation? I think also, too, it depends on how they were measuring time. Well, and it, we have here the, the sundial, let's say, within the last 10,000 years. True, but then also, could they not consider a month, a year? Well, you, you talked about the Sumerians. They, they went initially, all calendars were more lunar than they were solar uh, because you, you, you plant. We were, when we stopped being nomadic and become agrarian, uh, species that we learned by the the motion of the moon and the sun, but it was that's how you planted was by the moon. So I see where you're coming on that, but the perception is is that the sun in its uh, annual um, rotation would establish many of that or much of that. Yeah, I mean, that's uh, that's a possibility, but also, I mean, for, for sure, they, they would track things based off of the season and, and the way that the sun goes, and then, you know, well... Well, even the nice, female when is species... is it nice out, and then a year later, it's nice out again, or it's cold, and then whenever it comes back to cold again, then that would be a measurable amount of time, but... Well, women, though, were also a clock. Their menstrual cycle was very much predictable. Yeah. I'm just thinking, well, but who's to say that they consider that a, um, a block of time like what we consider that a block of time? Like we consider whenever it's summer out and then when it's summer again the next time that it's summer, that that's a full year. Like we're under the impression that they also calculated time the exact same way that we calculated time not because they were uh, dumb or not because they were stupid or anything like that it's just that maybe a quarter of the year that we have right now was considered a year to them or maybe half the year was considered a year or maybe you know three quarters of the year was considered a year that may be how you get these long, uh, these so-called long lifespans is because they were calculating time differently. I, I don't know that that's just where my thoughts go with it. Who knows? I mean, you look at some of what, you know, um, what is the um, monument there in South Dakota? Um escapes me right at the moment. But my point is, even in Australia, there's evidence that there was at one time trees, fauna, that were apparently really, really tall. Really tall. Uh, we have evidence of the fact that our species of giants, which a lot of all religions have these stories. So, 
and even if you say, well, we'd never live to be more than a hundred years, again, if we are evolving, or as we should, as nature does, nature evolves, it, everything does, but we seem to be, as a species, to not. We don't seem to evolve intellectually. We have technology, but again, the evidence is showing that you have today people who can't even remember their own phone number, much less someone else. I remember back in the day when I was climbing the corporate ladder, I had a, uh, we called it a golden Rolodex. Good old Rolodex, yeah. And I could remember 200 numbers. It was not a problem for me, you know. I was in the video industry, but the point is, today, we've lost that ability. And so, is this by design? Again, it's, it gets back to the question, paranormal, supernatural. How does this and go with, you know, are there really aliens, E.T.? And if it is, then what is, you know, the, the, the very point that the Vatican has inserted its nose into the, the topic, you, it, it, it makes one pause. You're going, now, wait a minute. Is this all interconnected? Is this... Is this the same direction, but a multifaceted um, approach to it, like a like a train of railroad cars? You got the engine that are pulling all the other cars into that central direction. Yeah, you have some theories that people think that the Vatican coming out with this document might be a setup for. You know, an alien invasion? Of, yeah, an alien invasion. Or a miraculous uh, approach of seeing a man riding a white horse on the clouds? Yeah, and then, you know, that, that goes back to the question, oh, well, if, if Jesus was real and Jesus came back, what, what, would, we, what would we do? And according to this, to this document, the, the, the Vatican would kill Jesus all over again because they wouldn't believe that he was real, that he was really the and son of And then their scam is up, man. <laughs> that's pretty much what the document is saying, and that's yeah. what my joke was in contact. Like, was oh, like, hell, they figured he came back. Now what the hell are we going to do? <laughs> They would call everyone crazy. They would be like, that's yeah, not Jesus. Would. That's not really Jesus. This has got to be verified. This has got to go through the court system. Oh, they they, they, they have a Vatican Council, and, you know, I could see the Jesus, you know, the cat waiting out in the lobby, you know, waiting for the council to decide how they're going to accept this. Is this going to be real, or is this an illusion? But what if the people really want it to be? Well, we now have it as partially real, I mean, that's how we would dice it up. That's exactly what they explain in the guidelines for uh, paranormal and supernatural events. Well, look at look at ex you know the exorcism. I mean, the Catholic Church is the what we would call the SME, the subject matter expert, and on the whole subject. I mean, they train priests for this shit, and 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 by that logic, that logic alone. That implies that E.T. is real because a demon is not human-born. It's not even sure if it's born, but it's here. And then we can get this whole thing that there was this, this, this other being called Satan that was thrown out of heaven. Well, maybe he was thrown out of a spaceship. Maybe they were exiled here. I mean, this story, because the Vatican is saying that God has, well... He, we're not God, so we can't think like God. Mm. And that God very well may have these other things that he just hasn't decided to share with us yet. Yeah, that was my joke at contacting the desert this year. I was like, if aliens randomly showed up right now today and, and landed... We would probably give them the shittiest land and the shittiest neighborhood <laughs> in the world in the project. It might be the one thing that unifies us. I don't know, Ryder. You think about it. I, I think that's the, the, the hopeful aspect is, is that's what would happen and it would end all of the the wars and all that. But I think that the way that the, <laughs> the world is going is that we would just post, we would do we would do to them what we did to the Native Americans. That's exactly what we would do. The part of the, part of the country I live in, they'd be shooting at it. 
<laughs> like hell, we're going to boom, you know, and I mean, and you know, yeah. <laughs> we got you a nice little plot of land uh, up in Montana. Um, it's been squared off. You can go up there, settle up there. Don't bother us. Do, do your own thing. And pretty soon we'll have alien casinos. And <laughs> <laughs> we got Star Wars all over. <laughs> it's like, okay. But, you know, we joke about it, but yet... Again, if you take the foundation of what the Vatican is saying is that, okay, folks, this thing with the paranormal, apparently ghosts do exist. But now we have to, again, like you said, the document, they have to authenticate it. And that goes through a whole step of processes. It's very interesting to me how they had A, B, C, D, and if you have D, you have subsubject E and F. That, you know, And I'm going... Who wrote this? I mean, yeah, you would think that they would be way more open to it because if people do consider it a religious experience, how does that hurt the church? It doesn't make any sense. And why is it the church's obligation to tell me what I experienced? I mean, no one can tell me what I experienced. It's my experience. And if well, I what about the events of the the three children? Um, uh, what's that? Um, Bada. Um, what is the event? chat room would know what it is the three children back in 1919 um you know what i'm talking about there where they actually saw the virgin mary and they received the prophecy right. from her um i'm looking someone will get this thing real quick is it yeah. feta is that right someone all right come on fatima thank you chris um but you know when you read that story now and I don't know if you've ever read it, but when check it out. That sounds to me like there was a freaking spaceship. I mean, everything that they say that took place there, in my interpretation in a modern set of eyes, I'm not seeing this as miraculous as the so-called mother of Christ. The thing about it is Mary had other children, but... You know, that would disqualify the virgin aspect, but I digress. Um, but the everything, <laughs> the way the light, uh, everything they described, that sounds to me like it was a freaking huge mothership. And and for me, Ryder, it, it, you know, as a, uh, you know, coming out of Christianity, you know, Bible students studied the Bible. There, There's the passage in Zechariah, and this is relevant to our conversation where Zechariah was standing on this cliff or this mountainside uh, with this angel and they looked to the east and they saw this ship coming in uh, they said you know they described it as a scroll with two ends that were rolled up and anyway this ship, what we would call it as a ship, and you can read this, landed next to Zechariah and this angel. There were two female pilots, and there was a main person that was sitting in the center, and he handed something to this angel, and then they departed. I mean, and then you've got the story in Ezekiel of when Yahweh came down, and he was literally in a ship. That's how they're describing. So, it can't help for but myself today where I see myself, what I've learned, particularly in reading what would be considered the occult, um, other documents of the stories that I was taught that were supposed to be authentic, that it seems to me that I can't, do, do I believe in the Anunnaki? I don't know. But if I, if I can accept what I've read in the Bible, quote unquote, then I have to say, well, then the Anunnaki sounds very real because I can go back to the Hindus, which is 5,000 earlier years earlier than the Samarans. And in the Hindu culture, we know about these beings. They're Varamas, they're flying ships, uh, they're laser lights that would destroy and cut. I mean, it seems to me that this is all related. And I'll extend one further, and that's why we're going to carry over to tomorrow. You look at what's happened on Mars. The evidence is something happened on that planet that was violent. We have the stories of Tiamat, that in the asteroid belt, something happened to that planet. And then you have us. And 
us being here, we can't even say that we know this is where we came from. We think it is. And my point is, this is all wrapped up in a nice little package called religion, philosophy, theology, ideology. Hmm. And within that, we have this acceptance now from the once that was a staunch opponent to now it's nudged into kind of center and saying, well, we can't deny it anymore. But then again, we're not going to say it's official until we say it's official. That's right. They've created the monopoly of the entire thing. Now, when you're mentioning like um, these people seeing craft in like ancient times, think about this. Think if you were to take a helicopter from today's time, take that helicopter back to biblical times, what would people think that it is? No, they would describe it, I think, as John did uh, in, Re- in Revelation, as a buzzing insect coming in. Um, and that's exactly how they described in many of these, these events, yeah. Yeah, so to me that means that there was a... A dragon. A, a sli- exactly. It, there was a slightly more technologically advanced society that was operating on the planet alongside a primitive society almost exactly the way that we are now i mean there are primitive societies in the amazon rainforest right now that people can't get close to and when they fly a drone near it the the beings on the the people on the island throw rocks and throw spears and and throw stuff at it because that's where biden's uncle went you know they ate him (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> but that that's a, if you were to somehow talk to them like let's say you were to infiltrate into their their clan or their onto their island and become one of them they would probably tell you that what they saw was an extraterrestrial craft because they had never seen anything which would like be it. true exactly yeah it would be it a is. ufo yeah, all right. That that's the way that uh, that is that is kind of gone, and there's. I think it's a high possibility that there is that there's always been a just a slightly more advanced, and, and you see that throughout throughout time. We send a drone to that Amazon rainforest. They do what they think that they need to do to try and take down that craft, right? Yeah. Well, if they had guns, they would shoot at the drone, right? Then you have Battle of L.A. in the early 40s where the military is shooting something in the sky. It's the exact same thing. But we have guns and we have modern-day things, so we're trying to take out the drone. It's the exact same thing, just for a different society, for a different... Uh, Do you think we're being watched? Watched in in what kind of way? By, um, by a superior... Yeah, let's say a superior, I don't know, being, culture, society. I, th- I think so, and I think that... The, the what we call these uh, these craft aren't inhabited by anything. I don't think that it's inhabited by any kind of beings. I think that they're that they're drones, and it's possible that the drones, some of the drones, well, of course we know a large majority of the drones are military drones, but there there's still a possibility in my mind that uh, a very small percentage of them can be from a slightly more advanced race or maybe even a way bigger advanced race. I mean, if they've had let's just say 2,000 years to develop their technology, let's take the, the, the Christian you know, mythos here that you know Jesus died roughly 2,000 years ago and then that you know, after death AD if they had the type of technology like helicopters and planes and stuff like that back 2,000 years ago, then they are definitely 
in the stratosphere of technology. They've, I mean, shoot, we've only had what, like, sixty years and sixty, seventy years in the development of our technology, and look how far we've we've come. So if they've had two thousand years, and, and they had like helicopters and planes way back then, then they're light years ahead of us. But I think that the the misnomer and the uh, the, the distraction and and the deception is that they're from that they're from off the planet and they look different than us. I think they I think they they're here. They've lived here and they've always been here and they look identical to us. They're just a different kind of like I mean, shoot, we haven't even really explored all of the of our oceans. You know, we don't know what's out there. There, there could be more land that has not been discovered yet where some of these things are living it could be a whole other freaking society of, uh, of humanoid people somewhere else on the planet yeah i'm convinced that the planet is way bigger than what we've been led to believe and i do believe that there is more land out there that something else lives on and they don't want people to know about that, and that's another reason that they don't want to release the technology. That's another reason they don't want to release any kind of uh, craft that is uh, powered by any kind of free energy, because then you can go there. Then you can get there. You probably wouldn't be able to make it uh, on a fuel-powered craft, because you don't have enough fuel to get there. Yeah. But if you had an this, answer, some kind of fuelless craft that doesn't need fuel, then you would probably discover that there's a lot more people here and there's more land. Well, I think Tesla, and boy, I know we're going a little over on this, but we'll pick up on this tomorrow. But again, there's that, that thought that, you know, look at people like Tesla who came in and realized that the planet is just one big electrical conductor. You don't need to be generating with other fossil fuels electricity because the Earth is a natural battery. No. But, uh, okay. Well, I guess we'll end it there uh, tomorrow. Then, then you get into like a, a veil.